Hello, this is the president. Hello, this is the president of the United States. Who is this? Is it you again? Look behind you. This is my private line. How did you get through? They're everywhere. All the time. We see them every day. But you have to look behind you. There is nothing behind me. How did you get this number? The spaceman told me. What spaceman? It doesn't matter. I'm telling you about monsters. Please, you must look behind you. Young lady, there are no monsters in the Oval Office. Lewis, and this is Ground Zero. The number is to call tonight, 503-225-0860. That's 503-225-0860. We are doing the last show of 2021. Can you believe it? Last show of 2021. And then we're going to be in 2022 after a long weekend, long-deserved weekend. And, uh... You know, it, it's too bad we had to miss a day because of the weather. Tonight, the weather seems to be fine. It's be in our favor. But I hear that all weekend long, it's just going to be one hell of a snowbound day. Maybe not. I mean, things change here all the time. But uh, you've, if you find yourself complaining about the snow, it's because you live in the Pacific Northwest. Because the snow here it just basically it confuses people for some reason. It's like having a tornado hit. You have to basically shut everything down and, uh, you know, stay in and eat macaroni and cheese all day. So that's pretty much what you do in the pacific northwest or drink a lot of coffee it's highly caffeinated and my heart's about to jump out of my chest and scream you know scream something but uh you know the other night i was talking about the quantum universe and i mentioned offhand that scientists stumbled upon an anomaly where they think it could be a doorway to another universe it, it goes in reverse this this anomaly it's a kind of a i don't know it's like an upside down portal or i don't know it's like a rift if you will it, it it's like from stranger things and i believe I, I i actually talked about this before but to refresh your memory uh in a scenario straight out of the twilight zone a group of nasa scientists working on an experiment in antarctica detected evidence of a parallel universe the, the experts used a giant balloon to carry nasa's antarctic impulsive transient antenna they call it anita antarctic impulsive transient antenna anita they were pushing this giant balloon high above the Antarctic or above Antarctica. And, and, and it was the frigid dry air that was up there provided the perfect environment with little to no radio noise to distort what they were picking up on. It detected high energy particles that, you know, usually they come down from space, but these were going back up into outer space. They're called neutrinos. And the finding implied that these particles we're actually traveling backward in time, suggesting evidence of a parallel universe. Now, Principal Anita investigator Peter Gorham, an experimental particle physicist at the University of Hawaii, suggested that the only way the Dow neutrino could behave that way is if it changed into a different type of particle before passing through the Earth and then back again. So Gorham, who's the lead author on a Cornell University paper describing the odd phenomenon, noted that he and his fellow researchers we're seeing several of these impossible events, which some were skeptical about. Not everyone was comfortable, of course, with the hypothesis. NASA was one of the first agencies to try and quell public excitement about the find, and so they went to great pains to silence and discredit the scientists. Well, the simplest explanation for the phenomenon is that the moment 
we had the Big Bang some 13.5, 13.8 billion years ago, two universes were formed. Sort of a second genesis happened. And we have our universe, and then, of course, we have that from our perspective running in reverse with time going backward. So, of course, if, if there are any inhabitants of a possible parallel universe, they'd consider us going in reverse. It's kind of a weird paradigm here. So these discoveries uh, were actually backed up by this paper, this peer-reviewed paper that was published, which argued that our universe might have this mirror reflection across time, a partner universe that stretches beyond the Big Bang. Of course, now with the James Webb telescope going into space, this is something, this is a lot bigger than a lot of people think. I mean, you're thinking, oh, it's just a telescope, what's the big deal? Well, the big deal is they're going to go back in time and they're going to try to figure out how this is all going down. And if they prove something, like a, a parallel universe, there's a lot of unlikely and outlandish hypothesis that scientists are saying these just might be it. These may be the true thing. And that it could explain why we get mysterious signals from out there, which are hinting that we have a completely new particle or uh, some particle existence that's flying out over the ice in Antarctica. Um, this reminds me of... Uh, Stephen Hawking, when he wrote A Brief History of Time, Stephen Hawking said that if the universe were to cease its expansion and start to contract instead, that the arrow of time would flip and things would happen in reverse, including people knowing what the stock market numbers were because they had already happened. Broken teacups on the floor would reassemble at the tabletop. And uh, conversely, if everything is happening in reverse, thoughts, light, motion, and yes, even bodily functions would be happening in reverse as well. But if that's true... Not only would people not know about the stock market numbers, but they also wouldn't know anything as your thoughts would blink into the new normal. So going forward and progressing would end up becoming reversed, and you'd see entropy. You'd see everything kind of going back, kind of, you know, going backwards, rescinding, I guess. So, I mean, if Hawking were correct, if Hawking was correct, all life, would stop at the moment of reversal because everything that had happened already would be the only thing happening, let alone in reverse. It's, I know it's really confusing, but life it is, you know, we look at life, it's theorized that everything we do goes in an infinite loop. It's called a Mobius strip, okay? And we try to learn every time we go past it, we go through a passage in time. You go one way, you do the loop, you go the other way, it's like, a progressive Groundhog Day sort of situation. It's the symbol, the 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 symbol of infinity is the, uh, the the horizontal eight, I guess, kind of like the symbol of the metaverse. And and to use that as a metaphor, we're looking at this one life palindrome where the beginning and the end are basically the same. You start with nothing, you end with nothing. Now, if you're familiar with the sentence. Madam I Adam or or Madam I Madam or or you know what a p palindrome is. It's it's where like Madam I'm Adam said in reverse or written in reverse is Madam I'm Adam. Or if you look at uh kayak, spelled the same way backwards, civic radar. Uh civic radar, radar civic, civic is C I V I C backwards, radar is R A D A R backwards, solos is S O L O S backwards, tenet. Mom, Dad, Bob, Otto, Hannah. Um, there's my favorite one is race car. That's my favorite palindrome. Race car spells the same forward as backward. Um, so yeah, the, the whole idea of forward, backward, backward, forward. It's this. It's this uh, strange conundrum. The palindrome and the idea that we begin with nothing and end with nothing. We start in nothingness and end in nothingness is a basic. I guess you could say philosophic science, if you will. It's, it's a big philosophy thing. Adam, Ome I mean, uh, what is it? Uh, Alpha Omega. Okay. 503-225-0860. That's 503-225-0860. I'm Clyde Lewis. You're listening to Ground Zero, and we'll be back.
Clyde Lewis. You're listening to Ground Zero. So, the idea of a parallel universe, everything going in reverse, is everything happening in reverse. Thoughts, light, motion, bodily functions. I don't know. Did you ever see the movie Tenet? That was one of the first movies I saw, I think, in the beginning of the year, or uh, just before the, the, the uh, pandemic hit. Wes and I went and saw it. And uh, it, it certainly theorized about the whole back loop, forward loop thing, backwards, forwards within the, the matrix of this illusion we call life, they say. So the idea of palindromes really were, you know, where, uh, you know, you're going backward and forward. It's the same forward, backward, alpha, omega, that kind of thing. And uh, I was thinking about, I actually wrote a whole uh, story in, um, I wrote it in a palindrome once. It was a it was a war between Satan and God fighting over the world and using palindromes to do it. And I also learned a lot about numeric palindromes. I mean, this year was a special year because it had 22 palindrome dates, which when digitally written out were the same backwards and forwards. One was a four-digit palindrome, which occurred on uh, January 2nd, 2021. That's 1221. 19 of them were five-digit palindromes, which occurred in January and continued through the month of December. Two of them were six-digit palindromes through the month of December. Wednesday, January 20th, 2021, marked the beginning of a 10-day palindrome stretch. Four, uh, let's see, 10, there were 10 consecutive days. We had five-digit palindrome dates, which are common usage in the United States. These dads, uh, when you're looking at the dates and, and what they said, it was like 1-20-21, 1-21-21. 1, 22, 21, 23, 21, 24, 21. It just goes on in sequence. January 20th, 2021 was a seven-digit palindrome date. It was 1, 20, 20, 21. January 20th, 2021 was Inauguration Day. It was the first palindrome number on an Inauguration Day. It was um, it was the first, I think, palindrome number on an Inauguration Day in American history. And the next one is about a 1,000 years from now on 1, 20, 30, 21. Uh, it's also important to point out that January 21st was the 21st day of the 21st year of the 21st century. 21st was the 21st day. The la- oh, it was the last 21st day of the 21st year of the 21st century. No, that was the first. Okay, let's try that again. I'm looking at these numbers and it's confusing me. So you look at January 21st. It was the 21st day of the 21st year of the 20th century. Then after January's palindrome dates, the month of December gave us 12 one 12 2 21 uh, let's see, three, four, five, six, seven, all the way to nine, 12, nine, 21. The dates of 12, 11, 21 and 12, 22, 21 were also palindromes in the six digit format. That's month, day and year for a total of 22 palindromes for the year of 2021. December 2nd, 2021 is also an eight digit palindrome date, 12, 2, 21, 2021. The only two years in a century that contain 22 palindrome dates are the ones ending in 11 and 21. So the synchronicities, in this whole thing are pretty damn interesting, especially when one calculates how many years have passed since calendars could do this. December 21st, now this is where I got screwed up. December 21st was actually the 21st day of the 12th month that ends the 21st year in the 21st century. Those are a lot of 12s and 21s. So in January, when uh, the last chime on the clock ceases to vibrate at midnight, some people believe that 2022 will be secretly known as year zero. The birth of Jesus Christ occurred in the year zero as we date forwards from the birth of Christ, but the Latin term for Anno Domini Nostri, Jesu Christu, or Jesu Christi, translates to in the year of our Lord Jesus Christ. But this year zero has a reversed meaning. This year is reversed to, uh, this, this year zero I'm talking about is reversed to mean that the beginning of the reign of the Antichrist will begin and the Great Reset will be well underway. And some people are awaiting the date of Tuesday, February 22nd, 2022, which is the second day of the week, second month, 22nd day of the month, and 22nd year of the century as the date that will change the world. Two, Tuesday, two, 22, two, 22. Or two zero twenty two, a lot of twos there. Tuesday, the second month, two twenty two twenty second, two zero two two. Let's see, second day of the week, second month, twenty second day of the month, twenty second year of the century. That what that they say that that's the date that will change the world. 
Now, no one knows for sure. And one can't say that a wonky date will mean anything, but numerologists and others see it as a day of truth and unraveling of secrets. It will be the date of the ultimate Saturn return. And what's also interesting is that it will fall on my 58th birthday. Year zero is from the idea that after the Antichrist takes over, they will eliminate the calendar so no one would refer to time as they once did. It will never be Anno Domini. It'll be, well, since the Gregorian calendar is based on Jesus' birth, the idea is that the Antichrist would want to remove in the year of our Lord from use. So year zero would be considered the prime mover date for the second incarnation of the new Roman Empire, the Fourth Reich, the Fourth Industrial Revolution. It will be the moniker for the rise of the imperial cult. There is a song. Uh, called Year Zero. It's by the band Ghost BC as well. They're a well-known horror rock group. They sing a lot of songs about the devil. Uh, the lyrics describe what Year Zero means to those who worship Satan. I'm going to read some lyrics, and they're kind of uncomfortable to read, but I'll read them anyway. Since the dawn of time, the fate of man is that of lice, equal as parasites and moving without eyes. A day of reckoning when Venice is to burn. Count down together now and say the words that you will learn. Hail Satan, Archangelo. Hail Satan, welcome your zero. Hail Satan, Archangelo. Hail Satan, welcome to your zero. Belial, Behemoth, Beelzebub, Asmodeus, Satanas, Lucifer. Crestfallen kings and queens comforting in their faith. Unbeknownst to them is the presence of the wrath. Since fate of man is equal to the fate of lies, he will tremble the nations, kingdoms to fall one by one, victim to fall for temptations, a daughter to fall for a son, the ancient serpent deceiver, the masses standing in awe. He will ascend to the heavens above the stars of God, which is... Scripture from Isaiah, actually. I was reading Isaiah the other night. It is very, I mean, it, it's trouble. I mean, it's it's very descriptive of what year zero means to the rise of the incarnate son of the devil. And the question is whether or not year zero will become a ra reality and that our existence will become a reversed mirror image of what our normalcy is or was. Year zero is considered um, the year of, Satan's Great Reset, a reversal of all policies and legacy systems for those of a new narrative. Year Zero is also a concept music album that was also done by Nine Inch Nails. It's about the end of the world. It is an album that predicts that the United States will have a dystopian downfall. It begins in 2022. Again, we ask if this is all part of the revelation of the method because we also are well aware that the apocalyptic scenarios, scarcity, eugenics, and cannibalism in the film Soylent Green also happen in the year 2022. It's very uh, chilling to think about that. Very chilling. Uh, since the dawn of time, the fate of man is that of lice, equal as parasites and moving without eyes. A day of reckoning when Venice is to burn. Count down together now. Crestfallen kings and queens, comforting in their faith, unbeknownst to them is the presence of the wraith. Since fate of man is equal to the fate of lice, he will tremble the nations, kingdoms to fall one by one, victim to fall for temptations, a daughter to fall for a son, the ancient serpent deceiver, the masses standing in awe, he will ascend to the heavens above the stars of God. There's also another lyric that talks about they will welcome the Lord of the Flies, which of course is the devil. Hail Satan, Archangel, Angel, Archangelo. Hail Satan, welcome to year zero. Hail Satan, welcome to year zero. Belial, Behemoth, Beelzebub, Asmodeus, Satanas, Lucifer. All of this is uh, pretty plain, pretty... Uh, you know, right to the point about year zero and what it is. Is it the year 2022? Is it Tuesday, February 22nd, 2022? That's the Saturn return date. That certainly uh, is um, a little troubling, chilling, and of course my birthday, which is something that I'm a little nervous about. But still, um, things going in reverse is probably natural for all of us right now than reverse normalcy. 503-225-0860. That's 503-225-0860. Back with more Ground Zero. Don't go away. always has a happy ending. 
Um, the fun fact today is that this year, 2021, will offer us 22 palindrome dates. Now, I'm not sure if you know what a palindrome is. If you don't, I'm going to tell you. It's when something is the same forward as it is backwards. backwards. <laughs> We are on the six, 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 six straight day of a five-digit palindrome date. So one twenty-six, six, six, twenty-one um, can be read the same forward as backwards, obviously. Six, 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 six. Whereunto you are also called and have professed a good profession before many witnesses. Six, 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 six. Fight the good fight of faith. Six 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 I'm Clyde Lewis. You are listening to Ground Zero. Last show of 2021. Moving into 2022 and the year zero. The numbers, the palindromes, reverse parallel universes. It's all part of the plan. We all know that numbers mean something to people. Hell, speak of 666, and immediately we think of Mark of the Beast. After the attacks on September 11, 2001, we were told repeatedly about numeric coincidences, whether it be Aleister Crowley, whether it be Masonic numbers, 11, 9, 77, wh whatever. It just seemed that everyone talked about the numbers, how they all added up, how there was a revelation of the method, how in movies we saw the towers destroyed. Now we're told, just like we were told back when 9-11 happened, our lives and the world would be changed forever. Time would not be the same. Now we're told that COVID-19, now that's happened, life will never be the same. Our lives are changed forever. This is the new normal. While the post-9-11, pre-COVID-19 world must have been the old normal, so everything is different, but it's normal. You understand what I'm trying to say here? It's it's all reversed. It's It's... Everything that we've held is sacred has now been reversed and made profane. Anything from declaring your sovereignty and freedom to how you worship and whether or not it is fashionable to have faith in God rather than blind faith in the technocracy. See, we now live in a world of the abstract. We 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 see simulacrum, uh, the abstract images. We see abstract beings. We are being told that abstract beings may exist in space. We live in a world of abstract thoughts, doublethink, and now we have a lot of cognitive dissonance going on. We, the people, are involuntary participants in an authoritarian game of Simon Says or Mother May I or some insidious fraudulent compromise under the threat of death. We're under the watchful eye of the devil who has imprisoned us, and we have garnered sympathy for that devil. In some reverse mockery of the reverence we should be having for God, this is where we are now. The year zero is inevitable, if not soon. And those who see 2022 as the coming advent of the counterfeit God may soon see their prophecy fulfilled. Satan, the deceiver, uses death as a threat to manipulate the masses. He has become your critical parent and warden in this prison. The new attitude of the government is that they are now the stern parent authorities that will let you out of your room eventually. 
And remember, the devil's in power never told you that it was a punishment, but a difficult decision made for your own good, for the greater good. But you must promise to cheerfully and uncomplainingly comply with the onerous, oppressive, socially pernicious, and escalating public health measures that exist now. You follow like a good dog without the whip being cra uh, cracked now, as Orwell said. You're living not in a new normal, but a new abnormal now. And by God, you'll like it. We will take from you. You will own nothing. You'll be happy in your own private hell that is a box with only the, uh, with only the necessities that the devil feels you need or that you're entitled to. The megadeth narrative of doom has already terrorized and bamboozled enough of the population, including the controller class, executives, and administrators of your job. It's all to an extent that engenders resistance and conscientious objection. But will you do it? No, you're scared to. What right-thinking citizen? What right-thinking citizen would flout indefinite, even permanent compulsory wearing of PPE? The necessity and utility of universal repetitive testing and the absolute need for universal physical social distancing. What right-thinking person would believe that they should continually jab themselves with poison to somehow make the beast go away? It's like that, that eagle song. They stabbed it with their steely knives, but they just can't kill the beast. Something is making us go insane. Doing the same thing over and over and over again, expecting a different result. Now, can anyone see how all of this is not working. Can you see that this is a malevolent form of mind control? This is mega trauma at the Machiavellian overclass, and this is what they've longed for. This is what they wanted. It's a, it, it's complete with grim reports of unburied corpses stacking up, the mishandling of bagged bodies left in the rain as personnel pack refrigerator trucks to capacity with all the dead we're seeing healthy relatively young individuals dropping like flies and getting the vaccine and people dying of covid after getting twice jabbed and boosted and now they're requiring four some in other areas are wanting six <laughs> when are we going to stop and say this is outrageous when are we going to stop and say that we're going in reverse we're not progressing the media is treating us the media is treating us to complimentary themes of stories about officials and medical personnel breaking down and weeping in public in response to the overwhelming circumstances. If it bleeds, it leads. But if it weeps, well, we we're always told in the news that we need to tear at the heartstrings of people, that that always works. Because then we're all finding ourselves begging to sympathize with the wardens that are responsible for our suffering. It's sickening, really. It's all an exercise in consent manufacturing through deceit. It's the devil on your shoulder using a machine gun to kill the angel on the other shoulder. Widespread fear is being deployed to advance the so-called lockstep agenda, which includes repressive social controls, restrictions on travel, replacing cash with electronic transactions, mandatory vaccinations, unlimited surveillance, limiting personal freedom, eliminating political protests, freedom of seat... <laughs> freedom of speech and everything else. And, oh, in addition, we have the Davos schools that are eager to implement a microchip to identify those who comply to the new poison reset. So, year zero, the program, the new programming is what it is. It is the programming that would gather birth registration and vaccination records of all newborns using a biometrically linked digital identity. The Global Alliance for Vaccines and Immunization is offering you a chip to prove that your babies and you are genotyped. That you're numbered and scored in order to be cataloged for whatever else they want to do, whatever medical treatments they want you to go for. This is the world now. This is year zero, and it's coming. And this is something you need to contemplate. It's normalcy in reverse. 503-225-0860. That's 503-225-0860. Back with more Ground Zero. Don't go away.
idea of everything going in reverse, we can always apply some reverse logic here, or what we call the retro logic, which would mean that we need to think long and hard about what is happening around us and not believe the lies that we've been given for the past two years. There's that two again, two years and then into 2022. 25 U.S. states broke their all-time records today for COVID cases. 25 U.S. states broke their records. U.S. reports 587,564 new coronavirus cases setting a world record. And you know what that tells me? You can't tell me that out of those 587,564 cases that everyone was unvaccinated. You can't tell me that. Especially when we had the vaccine, we're looking at what, 60, 70% of vaccination rate? That means the vaccination, the vaccines are a failure. They failed. They failed. We need to understand that. They have failed. I know some of you may feel a little bit of security. You have your security blanket and your jab, but you know what? You're going to have to get a booster. Otherwise, it's not going to work. You're going to have to get more boosters or it's not going to work. We're going to continue to do this until we get it right. You understand how insane this sounds, how insane this is getting. This is going backwards. This is devolving. This is not evolving or progressing. This is where we are now, and we're not going to get out of it until minds that are working together, that are working on a cure or working on a way to combat it, are going to make things happen. No lockdowns, no social distancing. We need to live our lives. Are you getting it yet? Because if not... Year zero is definitely going to be a cipher in our history. We're going to go to Bob in Texas. Let's go to Bob. Bob, hi, you're on Ground Zero. Hey, Rod, good to talk to you. Good to talk to you. Um, I was having a, a little mini synchronicity uh, while I was listening to you. Okay. Because, you know, my name is Bob, which is a palindrome. Mm-hmm. And my birthday is November 21st, which is 1121. Mm-hmm. And I was thinking, oh, yeah, a little bit of synchronicities with the number you were talking about. Yes. But it all seems very unimportant based on what you have just been talking about, all this very serious stuff. Uh, but I, I'm having a hard time wrapping my mind around this idea of, of backwards. I mean, does that mean we would come into existence in this plane as a very old person? And then as we were existing here, we got younger and younger and younger until we went back up into the womb and well, became once again, what we were before we were born? Once again, we go back to the idea of a quantum Mobius strip. You're always existing, and you're constantly revolving, and you're constantly going back to your source. So death becomes so, birth, birth becomes death. Death becomes birth, or birth becomes death, death becomes birth. Or death becomes birth, birth becomes death. It's it's this strange uh, loop. It's the it's the figure eight. It's the Mobius strip. It's what we're okay. doing. We constantly find ourselves going in circles until we find a way out of the maze. And at the moment, it, it's it's like the Ouroboros. It's the dragon eating its tail. It's the symbol of forever, forever in your hell, trying to get out and find paradise. And we are stuck in this hell until we find a way to admit to ourselves we were fooled, we were wrong, and we need to move forward. We're going to be stuck in this in this vicious cycle and and that's hell and that's and, and when you look at the the number zero it's a circle it's it's a forever loop and you can measure a circle beginning in anywhere you can you can you know it just begins anywhere because you don't know where it ends you don't know where it begins so yes uh, in a reversed parallel universe if it was fully reversed and you read Stephen Hawking everything would go in reverse your breathing your movement and yes eventually you'd go back into the womb and then disappear and then come back so again. we Okay, we go back one way or the other, either forward or back. Yeah, you go into nothingness, moving. or you okay. you come out of right. nothingness, go into nothingness, or you come out of nothingness and go into nothingness. It's it's the same thing. You, you like birth and death are the same thing. You don't remember your your time before you're born, and you don't remember the time after you die. You just move on. Okay, all righty. I know that um, I know I that's can, a weird I, thing to think about, but that's what eternal that's what eternal progression is. It's the idea that we never yeah. die, which is we continue to change and change and change and change. But there's a point where you stop changing. It's called entropy. It's a part where you don't go any farther. You just remain in one place. Your wheels start spinning. And when that happens, you just, you know, you, you languish and eventually dry up. You don't go any further. So you just basically destroy yourself. It's, 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 a, it's a strange thing. It's like a paradox. It, 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 well, it just stops everything. Well, what when Mother Earth moves the Earth? Maybe that that starts things over again too. Well, yeah, I mean cycles have to start over again. Remember, right. let there cycles be light. And cycles and cycles. Yeah, yes. exactly. Yeah.
Many dimensions. All right. All right. Thank, Thank you. you. Appreciate the call. Quickly, let's go to John in Kansas. Hi, John. You're on Ground Zero. Hey, how's it going, Clyde? Good, good. Uh, big fan. Thank First you. First time caller. Thanks for calling. Hey, uh, yeah, just uh, with the biblical sense of where things are going, what do you think about the Adam on Diamond uh, philosophy with the LDS Church? What, that the Garden of Eden is in Missouri? Yeah. I don't have any opinion of it. I just think that's there's something called uh, sunstone theory, and uh, Joseph Smith, I think, said something to that effect that it was in Missouri. I don't know if it was or it wasn't. I I, I have a feeling it wasn't. I think that the Garden of Eden was in Africa, actually. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, I just uh, I didn't know if you had any opinion on it, um, but with the LDS Church in mind, uh-huh. do you have any opinion with the uh, the philosophy of what Joseph Smith saw? in his day versus what's going on right now? Uh, it just depends on what you're talking about. I mean, you know, Joseph Smith had a lot of things that he said, a lot of things that he wrote, a lot of things that he put together. I mean, you know, people have their four, what they call the four scriptures that they read from. And, uh, you know, I, I don't know if you're, you're, are you talking about the white horse prophecy? What are you talking about? I know this, this is inside baseball for a lot of people because they don't know what we're talking about because I am a former Mormon. But, but I'm just I, saying, I if you're talking about the white horse prophecy, the church has denied it. They've said that uh, it's not going to happen. But uh, I remember being raised being told that in the end the Mormons would come and save the day in the United States. And that's why when Mitt Romney ran for president, everybody was thinking this was the big white horse prophecy being fulfilled. So, you know, I, I just don't know. I mean, the church has denied it now. So I don't know if it's even uh, valid anymore. I, 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 I haven't really looked into Mormonism for, you know, 50 years. It's been a while. Yeah. So uh, I just uh I was raised that way, so I just I didn't know if you uh had any opinion. Well so on... was I. I mean I'm from Utah and you know, of course, you know, you're Mormon till prove it otherwise. So that's that's basically my 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 position on it. You may want to call Glenn yeah. Beck about that because I think he's still an active Mormon. <laughs> so anyway, he he'd probably answer a lot better than I would, that's that's for sure. Uh okay, let's go to Mark in California. You got about a minute. Go ahead, Mark. Hey, so uh, just on your last topic, um, when I was a child, uh, I, my first fondest memory was talking to this old man in my bedroom. And I went downstairs and I told my dad I just talked to this old man in my bedroom. And he didn't know what I was saying. But uh, yeah, anyway, long story short, this later on, I talked with a psychic. She said that was my older self talking to my younger self as yeah. far as like what I should do in life. That happens a and lot. person... It's come back to me like when I was in a, um, like in a dream. Uh, mm-hmm. This person has come back, so I didn't know if this is yeah. like kind of common or what it's called. Yeah, it is common. Uh, a lot of people. Yeah. I mean, there was this guy who actually got it on videotape, but he met a man that was his older self, and he had the same tattoos and everything. It was just bizarre. I need to find that video right. so I can show people. But yeah, he actually met his older self, and uh, and it was weird. It was he wasn't even related to him. He, they had the same name. Uh, and it was just a bizarre thing. And I would say, where's the paradox in that? I don't know if that even would constitute a paradox. Going in reverse, reverse time, the loop, everything. But, you know, we live in some very interesting times. And a lot of things are being proven and unproven. And uh, a lot of things are being found that you can only think about the Twilight Zone. Coming up, if you want to hear Twilight Zone, stay tuned. We've got David John Oates to do the year in reverse. Reverse speech and everything that it brings to the table. And you'll be able to hear what goes down deep inside the unconscious mind of certain individuals that we see on the news every night and read about. 503-225-0860. That's 503-225-0860. I'm Clyde Lewis. You're listening to Ground Zero, and we'll be back. It's a well-known fact that controversial talk show hosts have recently been censored and even banned on the Internet by corporate and political interests. Hey guys, it's Clyde Lewis from Ground Zero. And in order to counter the suppression of information, we've decided to create our own private digital playground called Aftermath. It's an exclusive online multimedia library featuring a social media platform, videos, audio clips, archive shows, research groups, documents, and a news aggregator. 
In addition, we're hosting other Ground Zero friendly podcasts like Conspira Fact with Wes and Bill, Into the Microcosm with Jimmy Jean, Para Awareness with Mr. Gates and Isaac Weishaupt, Opposing Perspective with James Ponder, The Infinite Fringe with Billy Ray Valentine, and several more shows. Mobile apps for Android and Apple are available too. The monthly subscription for Aftermath is only $10 a month. The yearly special for new subscribers during the month of July is only $79 a month. You save almost $40. Sign up now by going to Aftermath.media. Again, that's Aftermath.media. Are you intrigued by Paranormal Talk Radio? you love the new Paranormal Radio app from Talk Stream Live. You'll find a great selection of talk shows covering UFOs, ghosts, strange phenomena, and much more. Download the Paranormal Radio app now and start listening to the very best in Paranormal Talk entertainment, including the network you're listening to right now. The Paranormal Radio app, free in Google Play and the iOS App Store. Spinning complacently in the darkness, covered and blinded by a blanket of little lives, false security has lulled the madness of this world into a slumber. Wake up. An eye is upon you, staring straight down and keenly through, seeing all that you are and everything that you can never be. Yes, an eye is upon you, an eye ready to blink. So face forward, with arms wide open and mind reeling, your future has arrived. Are you ready to go? The loudspeaker spoke up and said, the loudspeaker spoke up and said. The loudspeaker spoke up and said. Give up. Give up. Give up. I'm Clyde Lewis, and this is Ground Zero. The numbers to call tonight, 503-225-0860, that's 503-225-0860. It's getting to a point where, and it's been, some say, 10 years in the making, maybe even more, where the media and the techn technocracy and uh, you name it, they are using symbols and numbers and memes, literally, that are well-crafted for reaction. And it, it's as if, you know, you're looking at the aesthetic more so than the substance. I mean, everything we get anymore, it doesn't fulfill us. It empties us out. We feel empty. We feel like we're wearing a mask, literally. Not just the PPE we wear, but the masks we wear to try and put a smile on everything. But, again, we look at, as I was saying the other night, the adversarial activist media that is the biggest, that was the biggest casualty of 20. 21 and you know everything looks like a crisis everything is about death everything is repeated over and over and over so the intended targets of propaganda repeat like parrots and use have cognitive dissonance they they, they have a hard time with contradictory thinking I mean, all of us, we all try to keep up appearances to our spouses, our families, our friends, our co-workers, the world at large. We hide behind a facade that veils the disappointment and sorrow we carry around with us, the trauma, the mega-death narrative that we hear every day, uh, especially during the holidays. I mean, for a lot of people, the holidays is a time to put a smile on your face, pretend that everything's fine, you spend money so you don't have to worry that people are forgetting you at Christmas time. I mean, I've been watching... Uh, because uh, Ron was telling me that he's watching the new Dexter TV show, and I've been watching that too. 
And a lot of the time, I find myself sympathizing with Dexter, not because I'm a sociopath. That would be horrible. But because I know that there are a lot of people that are like Dexter, or they have been in the moment where they're like Dexter, where they feel like that they wish that they could just wipe out the people that don't agree with them, or they could wipe out those that they believe are, you know, turning the world upside down, turning it or making it go reverse, you know. This game of keeping up appearances become the true affection of worship than that, that of worshiping Jesus or any other dogmatic figure that we claim to adore during the Christmas holidays. Appearance is everything, they say. You know, Keep up appearances. Look good. It's all image-driven. We have an image-driven culture. I mean, look, I got a face for radio. I know that. But I show up on TV every once in a while. But that's the thing is that you know the idea of an image-driven culture, image and action parameters, how we see things, uh, coming out of the mouths of people, and it, it, sometimes you can't believe what's coming out forwards, let alone in reverse, right? If there is a way to do that, and there is. But you look at style, and it, it, so often it's more important than the substance. As long as the appearance is convincing, and as long as we are made to believe it, as long as we have deep fakes, and we have scenarios that can be played out, and it's, it becomes important to us. The news can lie. Elections can be lied about. All these things can be in question. You can fake a hate crime. You can even believe that a young man took a gun across state lines and started shooting black people, which he didn't do. And the court saw it and said, no, not guilty. And yet I got an email or a tweet from my governor saying, I bet all of us are feeling the hurt of this verdict because we realize that the court system sucks and it didn't go our way. Are you kidding me? People pay attention. They know how things are going to go. They know, and they can smell it. They can sniff it. I mean, we see this all the time in politics, where gifted communication teams carefully craft a message about a candidate and his history that may or not, may not be true in his background and his beliefs. We do that a lot with Joe Biden. Joe Biden is, uh, you know, he can do no wrong, because now those that have hijacked the media, that have hijacked our way of life, that have taken the culture and jammed it are, are basically pushing us towards the idea that these people have well i don't know clean spirits clean souls they, des they deserve an apotheosis they deserve to be treated like gods because their appearance is an important consideration how they present themselves often says something about who they are on the inside right we always judge a book by its cover even though we say we shouldn't but yet every year all the time we have show trials. We have people that have to apologize for their attitudes. They go on their apology tours. They're there to expose people, expose people that maybe made a mistake years ago, and now they have to apologize for those mistakes or a tweet that was sent out or something. And yet, you know, we don't see the tried and true sexual predators or criminals or anyone say, I'm sorry. They get away with it because now we don't even have the ability to fight those who break the law, we just drop all charges because we see it as a righteous law breaking. It's like vigilante justice, and we're all like, yay, only those on our side we decide to get behind. There's no due process. The appearance that most of the accused have is what is important, how they look, how they behave, social credit scores, all those things. Yeah, there are different categories that you rank people on. We know this. Behavior, personal preferences, interpersonal relationships, from the people you hang out with to the amount of time you spend on social media, playing video games, types of purchases you make, how much debt you have. I mean, the world's finally going to know everything about you, and you'll be happy about it. Because why? You're, you're in a prison that they've created. No time in history have we been so willing to give up our freedom, so willing to give up our identity. I mean, you can say goodbye to privacy. You can say bye to, I mean, Big Brother. Look at that. AI stepping in. Great reset, always there to monitor your every move and dig deep below that mask you're wearing. We have been groomed, groomed quite well for a social credit system, for a medical surveillance state, and the sweeping dystopia, the dystopia that we see, all of it, is uncannily reminiscent of things like Black Mirror, the Twilight Zone. It's uh, this nosedive we're going into. They don't seek out the conscious mind. They feel that they're gaining control of it. What they want is the unconscious mind, and they want to crack it open so they can program people with the voices that come from that reverse mirror dimension. This is potentially a totally new way 
for the government to manage the economy and society, the reset. The system would put forward a ledger of discredited individuals because of your deep thoughts, because of your genotype and phenotype. To know the future is to know human nature. And to do so, you have to dig deep into the minds and the consciousness of those out there that you suspect are your enemies, suspect that are the good guys and the bad guys. There's one way you can figure that out, and that's with reverse speech. So says David John Oates, who's our guest tonight on Ground Zero, and we'll have him coming up. Don't worry, he's coming up with reversals of the years. The year in reverse, right here on Ground Zero. Don't go away. John Oates is our guest tonight on Ground Zero. In 1984, he first heard about backward messages in rock and roll music. And a new hobby was born, playing tapes backwards. He rapidly became obsessed with this new hobby, and in 1987, he had developed the theory of reverse speech. Since that time, David has had an active career, now spanning over 30 years, furthering the field of reverse speech, his full-time occupation. He's developed new theories, designed therapeutic and training techniques, he has published several books on reverse speech, including Beyond Backward Masking, Voices from the Unconscious, and It's Only a Metaphor. Numerous tapes and training manuals overcoming his speech stutter. He has lectured around the world to crowds of thousands of people, trained hundreds of students. He's also investigated or instigated some of the first mainstream studies and presented reverse speech on hundreds of radio shows, thousands of radio shows, actually, including his own show, the David Jono's Reverse Speech Show that ran successively for three years, syndicated coast to coast in the United States, where David lived for 10 years in the 1990s. He's also a certified hypnotherapist and trainer and currently attends to his therapy and corporate consulting business using reverse speech techniques. David John Oates, welcome to Ground Zero. Thank you, Clyde. How are you? Thank Doing you. great. We're, uh, we're experiencing a really heavy storm out right now. We've been having a lot of oh, snow, but... Yeah, a lot of rain hitting the windows right now. We think it's ice, and we hope it's not because it'll be very treacherous getting home. But still, it's good to have you here, especially in this time. It's been a really strange 2021. In fact, it just seems like what first started out as something that we we had to get used to is now something that's out of control. And it just seems that the lies keep piling up and the disingenuous types of uh, uh, talk happen. And I'm sure you can unveil a lot of things with ver reverse speech. Oh, I've been actually very busy in 2021. I've been uh, covering all the events very, very closely. I've got most of the major events where I, I heard you talk about the written count, written house. Of course, I've got that. And we got Prince Andrew in the news again and Glenn Maxwell. I got reversals on that. And um, gee whiz, where do I go? Well, let's, <laughs> let's start. Let's start at the beginning. Uh, we we start with, uh, this was the year of the inauguration. It was on a palindrome day where the date is forward and reverse at the same time. And we had uh, the advent of uh, our good buddy uh, Joe Biden as president of the United States. And so we'll start out with Joe Biden because, uh, of course, he's the president and, uh, and uh, he spoke. And we'd like to hear some of the reversals on him to start. All right. Well, look, you know what? I'll start off with a funny one on okay. Joe Biden. Okay, well, actually, they're, they're, they're all funny once you listen to it all. But it, it, I'm sure you all know, every speech he does, what, what does he say over and over and over and over and over and over again? Get the vaccine. Get the vaccine. Just go and get the vaccine. Okay, so here he is telling us to go and do that. It may be deadlier than the ones that have come before. Let me say again and again and again and again, please get vaccinated. It's the only responsible thing to do. And then backwards he says, nagging it, nagging it, nagging it, nag. Nagging it, nagging it, nagging it, nag. <laughs> nagging it, nagging it, nagging it, nagging it. He is nagging and nagging and nagging and nagging. Oh, that's I'm funny. Sorry? That is great. I mean, he is nagging people to get the vaccine. He, oh, of course know, he is. To the yeah. point of saying, people, you know, my patience is uh, through and 
saying, you know, nothing but disease and death for you in 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 twenty twenty two if you don't get vaccinated. I mean, he's just. I mean, he's he's run the gamut, in my opinion, gamut of of, of all oh, the horrible things you can say. I know. Yeah, I know. Well, when I found that reversal, I just laughed my head off. Yeah, it's true. It's so funny. And then, of course, we, I got to play you this one. This is his classic. You know, you know how he stutters and stammers and can't get through his speech. You know, so right. here he is in one of these classic little little miss miss what we call it missteps, I guess. Yeah. There's been no indication that's the case at all with regard to. Um, uh, you know, uh, uh, the, 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 there's a total of uh, um, uh, okay, so yeah. he's, he's lost it, right? Right, so that's what he says backwards. Have I lost it? Have I lost it? <laughs> Have I lost it? Have I lost it? Yes, I think he has. I think he has. <laughs> These I are remarkable, it really is because I mean, it, it just shows you know that in, in the midst of his uh bumbling through his sentences he's worried that maybe he's you know losing his grip or something i think yeah that's what it feels yeah, like this sounds absolutely like absolutely right all right so we, so there are two funny ones let's look at something a little bit more serious okay so well, here he is here he is talking about talking about the uh, uh making progress against COVID 19 although i'm sure that progress is about to go out the window with omicron ready to go crazy it's certainly going crazy in australia yeah Anyway, here we go. One of the great gifts of the spirit of independence. And think about this. One of the oh, I'm sorry. No, this is from Fourth of July. I okay. apologize. Well, sure. Yeah, let me let me start again. One of the great gifts of the spirit of independence. And think about this. One of the great gifts is our capacity to see ourselves whole and see ourselves honestly. And backwards, he says, you're not safe, Armageddon. That's so clear. I mean, that's 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 creepy and clear at the same time. Yeah, you're not creepy. safe, Armageddon. Yeah. yeah. It just feels creepy. like this is where we're headed. We're headed to some sort of a, you know, Armageddon or apocalypse. It's just been in the air and people are already, you know, thinking about it. They're thinking about it more now than they've ever thought about it. Yeah, oh yeah, absolutely. Uh, I should uh, here. Let, let me play this one. I think this one about the vax. If it's not, well, I know I got a couple that say something similar. Anyway, let's play this one. So the time for waiting is over. This summer we made progress through the combination of vaccine requirements and incentives, as well as the FDA approval. Four million more people got their first shot in August than they did in July. Okay, when he talks about the vax, he says, I'm going to share the mark with us. 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 Okay, just remember that. Do you interpret gonna... Do you interpret that as uh, as most? Uh, a lot of people have been thinking that maybe the vaccine is part of the mark of the beast structure. What are your thoughts? I think it is certainly leading to it. For example, here's Fauci talking about the mark. I don't think the vaccine is the mark right. itself. But I think it is leading to that, whatever that system is. Okay, here, let me play this one off Fauci. Okay. Listen to this. That the federal government had been involved in the development and or facilitation of three separate platforms of vaccines. One was the mRNA. The other were vector, either an adenovector or a chimp vector. And the other was the soluble recombinant proteins. And then he says back was then they mark you all be lost. 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 And oh. I am getting oh numerous references to the mark, and in connection with the vaccine. Uh, I tell you what, you know, let, let's uh, let's uh, uh, let's take a break. We're gonna take a break. Sure. And then why don't you gather together some of these marks? Uh, that you have in reverse about the vaccine because that's always been a question in my mind as to whether or not they see this as a mark or right. see this as a way to somehow thwart the DNA process because uh, I've talked about this before. It just seems to be that now, especially in Australia with their draconian measures they have there, and we look at Australia, we say, is this how it's going to be in the U.S.? And sure enough, they have people that are being arrested for just shaking hands or sitting in restaurants with with uh, non-COVID uh, papers and it's like you can't eat, you can't buy, you can't sell, you can't do all those things that 
that John the Revelator said in the Bible that in the future you won't be able to do without the mark. And so to to hear this coming from reverse speech, I think is is equally chilling. And I think that we should uh, we should wait until after the break to talk about this. Five zero three two two five zero eight sixty. That's five zero three two two five zero eight sixty. Tonight is a very special program. David John Oates, the year in reverse, and so far it's kicked off in a very chilling way, from the inauguration of Joe Biden to now talking about the vaccines and whether or not they are the mark of the beast. Five zero three two two five zero eight sixty. We'll be back. satanic messages the music is reversible but time turn back turn back turn back turn back Did you hear that? What? Something on that tape when it ran backwards. What are you talking about? Run it down again. <laughs> now play it backwards. I don't believe it. You never sounded so good. I'm serious. Play this backwards and you hear evil messages. Over and over again, not only rock music, but people in Hollywood all over who are being called by Satan into his army. Okay, you see it over and over and over and over again. And I tell you right now, okay, you see it over and over and over and over again. And I tell you right now, okay, you see it over and over and over and over again. And I tell you right now, people in high places are being used by spirits to suck the world into the new age under Antichrist. And it's not just in rock music. That just happens to be what we're exposing today. I'm Clyde Lewis. You are listening to Ground Zero tonight. David John Oates, reverse speech, the year in reverse, and the mega death narrative. That's what we're experiencing: the mega death, mega trauma, being told things in forward speech that are scary. But reverse speech is even more terrifying because you get to hear deep down in their unconscious mind what our leaders are telling us, what they're saying. Under their breath, and it's tonight with David John Oates. Now we were talking earlier about how people like uh, Joe Biden and Dr. Fauci have mentioned as they speak of the vaccines about the mark, and we've speculated all this year about whether or not the vaccine is either a, uh, a mechanism to bring about the mark of the beast, or it is the mark of the beast itself. And of course, I told David as we were hearing about the mark in these reversals that he should gather some together, and so we're going to listen to some of those right now. Uh, yeah, I didn't realise you'd been talking about that. I, I, I hadn't even planned on going on this direction. So um, uh, let's uh, let me see. Oh, oh, I got a couple on Biden up, and a couple on here. Let me just play. Uh, oh, hey, let me play a Mark reversal on Biden, and then I'm going to move to Fauci. So here's the forwards. No one U.S. forces or any forces have uh, have been lost. Conducting our drawdown differently would have certainly come with an increased risk of safety to our personnel. 
Okay, well, this isn't about the vaccine, but he says backwards, had to mark you. Yeah. Okay, so here we've got the mark. And here we have one on Fauci of a different nature. Listen to this. What we have right now, we have over 120, close to 130 million people have already received at least one dose of this. It says back was now we sealed that beast. And now we sealed that beast. And now we sealed that beast. And now we sealed that beast. Talking about the vaccine. Here's another one about the vaccine. People over 65, at least 85, 87 percent have received at least one shot. We're doing well there. But as you mentioned correctly, we still have a substantial proportion of the population who's not vaccinated. It says, hush, now seal the beast. Hush, no seal the beast. Hush, no seal the beast. Hush, no seal the beast. That's amazing. That's language straight out of the book oh, of Revelation, that, isn't that, it? It is. It's, it's strange because, like I said, I mean, we... We've speculated about this, uh, talked about this, and uh, we've had guests on to talk about this. And it uh, it just seems now the the move will be to biometrics. The move will be to genotype bio, biometrics from chips to uh, tattoos to ID cards, and it's going to be part of the surveillance state. It's going to be part of uh, of of yeah. what you know we we all feared would be the the beast system. And I, I'm, I'm sure that's the evolution. So speaking of which, uh, there another news story that uh, apparently has been turned into what is called the big lie is the fight over whether or not the elections were rigged here in the United States and whether or not January 6th, the, the, the uh, situation that happened at the Capitol, uh, was uh, a, a, a big deal. Do you have anything uh, about those events of the year? Uh, yes, I certainly do. Let okay. me just move to that file. Uh, look, um yeah, um, I think probably what I've got. Um, uh, well, look, let me before I make any comments, let me just open up the file. And, All right. Uh, the uh, uh, what I've got is I've got um, I've got uh, Giuliani and uh, Donald Trump Jr. Uh, on the morning. Um, for example, here we have uh, Giuliani. This is Giuliani on the morning of January the sixth, r- rallying the crowd. This has been a year in which they have invaded our freedom of speech, our freedom of religion, our freedom to move, our freedom to live. I'll be darned if they're going to take away our free and fair vote. And he says, Saul Brave, now you fight. 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 I'm going to say something a little bit controversial here. I think that. Uh, these two guys unconsciously, not consciously, but unconsciously, contributed to the riots. Okay? They were they were sending they were sending their unconscious minds, uh, unconscious thoughts to the unconscious minds of those who were they, they were listening to. Right. That's exactly what I'm because saying. Because reverse yeah. speech seemed. I mean, I've I've heard before when we've done reverse speech shows that you know there are people that communicate messages. Uh, underlying messages that uh, that certainly uh, reflect both forwards and backwards what they're saying. Right. And so when he's saying right. they're not going to take the vote, you might as well go and fight. And and that's what he that's what he's pushing. He's pushing the idea right. that we should fight for our freedoms. Right, right, right. And he adds even em- more emphasis to it to this re- with this reversal here. So over the next ten days, we get to see the machines that are crooked. And then he says, God has mission with this. So he sees it as a righteous fight. God has a mission, and it's this right. to, to basically take over the capital. That's right. That's right. Yeah, yeah, wow. yeah. It's an incite. It's an incite. Incitation to is, is that a word? Yeah. <laughs> it's in, incite to write, ba- right. Basically, yes. right. Unconsciously. Um, yeah, and then um, uh, oh, and I play another one on Giuliani. We'll look a couple on Trump Jr. It's a clean election. They'd have you come in and look at the paper ballots. Who hides evidence? And then he says, "I bet that they kill." <laughs> 
That's probably not as clear as some of the others, that one, sorry. But it's kind but, of a uh, premonition because of uh, yeah, how many people died. Right. I mean, we, 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 you know, it's speculative that some of the police officers died of other causes, but that one woman that was shot by the by the police yeah. there, I mean, we they had some people that did die in that. And so, the, you know, talking about oh, that yeah, is I kind did. of a, a premonition, yeah. if you will, of what yeah. was going on uh, in the minds of people that were there at the January yeah. 6th gathering. Yeah. Yeah, see, and here's Trump Jr. on that, uh, this, also on the morning of January 6th. The fact that you are all here on this rather cold January day. Says, oh, we get tough. Oh, we get tough. Oh, we get tough. Oh, we get tough. Oh, wow. It just, it, it just, it doesn't surprise me that this is what is happening, what's being told and what's being said in the unconscious minds of those that organized the rally. It's uh, because that's what they were there for. They were there to start. A uh, what I call a uh, a democracy check that ended up being somewhat of an insurrection. Five zero three two two five zero eight sixty. David John Oates will be back. John Oates with us tonight on Ground Zero, the year in reverse. Now, many times we've had David on the show, and he's gone back in time, and he's done reversals on famous crime cases. We look at John Benet Ramsey and the mother, the reversals on John Benet Ramsey's mother saying that she witnessed the rape and the killing of her daughter. We have O.J. Simpson, where he said that he killed them high, and that uh, you know there were other things that were revealed in reversals. One of the biggest stories, one of the strangest crime stories of 2021 was the Gabby Petito uh, Brian Laundry case. Uh, they found her body uh, in Wyoming. They found his body in Florida. Uh, both seemed to have been fighting. There was a lot of other uh, strange stuff. The family members were acting bizarre. Uh, David, do you have any reversals on the Petito case? Uh, yes, I do. On the that famous little clip where the police pulled them over. Okay. Um, did reversals on all of that and uh oh well look i'll let the reversals speak for themselves um so here's 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 brian talking to the police officer you'll have to excuse the audio and that's the best i had backwards he said i said i'll kill you oh my god can you hear that or was yeah that audio too play, play that again play play forward yeah. and then backward again yeah. Okay, so here's the forwards. I said, let's just take a breather, and that's fine. He says forwards. I said, let's just take a breather, and that's fine. Here, here I'll play that forwards again. I said, let's just take a breather, and that's fine. Okay. The backwards, he said, I said, I'll kill you. Oh, my God. Oh, this okay. is creepy. So really it's already in his mind. Right. Uh, then he says this. Uh, f- forwards, he says, oh, uh, well, she gets worked up sometime, and I try to distance myself from her, and I locked the car and walked away. She just gets worked up sometimes, and I try and really distance myself from her, so like, I, I locked the car and I walked away. Backwards, he says, kill more force urgency. Kill more force urgency. Kill more force urgency. He really okay, wanted so. to kill her. Oh, he's out to get her. You, you listen to this one. I don't want to go too far back. Says I don't. Hang on, the fours. Hang on, I have to read it. I don't want to. Hang on, let me read it. I don't, I don't want to go too far back. Too far back. Okay. Then it says back was it's the murder. Okay. Oh. So he'd already planned to do it. Okay, and uh, this is what he thinks of her. He's talking about about Gabby. For the past like, week or so, traveling around. And the flies here are like, pretty intense, so the flies are definitely going to get into her. And he says, I left the whore sleeping. <laughs> oh, sorry, not the whore. It's just whore. And I left whore sleeping. <laughs> oh, 
you know, talk about some fights they had, you know. And uh, but yeah, yeah, he'd already planned to kill her. This wasn't a, a random act of violence. It was already in his mind. They'd obviously had some huge fight. He says backwards, "I said I'll kill you." He's thinking about what he said. He told Gabby he would kill her. Then when Gabby's interviewed, she basically says this. My vibe is like, I'm in a bad mood. She says, my vibe is like, I'm in a bad mood. Backwards, she says, we are guilty. We are guilty. We are guilty. We are guilty. Not too sure whether she's just saying we are guilty because we've been fighting or whether there was something else going on. I don't really know. Well, she said, uh, she said it was her fault. You know, she told no, the police that the reason why he was fighting with me is my fault. It was my fault. So we're guilty of fighting. We're no, guilty of, so of having a fight, and I'm the one who caused yeah. it. So she feels a lot of guilt in the situation. That's uh, right. that, that's that, what that, I remember that, about the case. So, so yeah, she felt a lot of guilt in the fight. So, but he was yeah. he was angry enough to kill her. That's 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 really yeah, creepy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's exactly right. Yeah, well, planned out, not a random fit of rage. He it was he, he planned this whole thing out. So, uh, and of course, I don't can't tell you anything about about his body. I just my own personal opinion is he probably knew that he was done for and he killed himself. That's that's my guess. Yeah, who knows? So, I mean, there's nothing. You never found anything about him, you know, wanting to end his life or anything. No, I didn't. no, no, I didn't. You know, and it's like no. I said. I mean, we've had reversals before. Uh, I mean. I always these are what I call the classic reversals. What I'm about to ask you to do the John Benny Ramsey ones are very very classic right. about where what uh, the mothers thought of Jean Benet. I was running if you have any of those available that you could show oh, people sh- that we do reveal crime and who does crime uh, or how crimes are committed. I mean, get me to, the the Petito situation. This is really creepy stuff. But looking back at O.J. Simpson and Jean Benet Ramsey, these are some classic reversals. Yeah, well, O.J. Simpson's in the uh, news again too. Yeah. Um, I, I- I'm actually thinking about uploading all the videos to YouTube on OJ. Incidentally, I don't know whether you've realised this or noticed it, but I've the last four weeks I have uploaded all my uh, research from 2021 to YouTube. There's over 100 videos. Yeah. I've been seeing them. They're great. Yeah. And, and it's easy. It's weird to see them when they're speaking on video as well. You can see their mouths moving, and it looks weird. Yeah, yeah. I know. That, that's freaky to see the mouths so, move. So, wh- yeah. Why don't, you de- why don't you demonstrate the Jean Benet Ramsey crime, and maybe if we have time, OJ? Yeah. Okay. So, uh, so here's uh, here's the classic one on Patsy Ramsey. I always play. We feel like there are at least two people on the face of this earth that know who did this, and that is the killer and someone that that person may have confided in. Okay. So she's talking about the killer. The killer. And some of the, that person, so the killer, that person may have confided in. So who is that person? Back when she tells us, I'm that person. Oh, my God. That never ceases to give me chills. It just... Yeah, it's just amazing. And there's another one that's pretty similar um, where she says, uh, I, I don't think we've knowingly met anyone who could be this vicious. I can't believe that we have ever knowingly met anyone that can be this vicious the back she says i'm the only one i'm the only one i'm the only one i'm the only one i mean that's like it's forwards that one well yeah i mean the, the suspicion was always that the mother did it that uh, apparently jean benet maybe have wet her pants or something and that uh she uh she did it with a hairbrush or something har- harmed her with a hairbrush or something or violated her with a hairbrush it was just and then they said oh why would you say anything because she was dying of cancer and the family was you know, just angry, and then some guy came forward. His name was Carr, I believe, said that he did it, and yeah. then they found out that he was lying. In he fact, was, uh, yeah, I, I, I think reverse speech even proved that he was lying about the case that he yeah. that he had nothing yes, to do I with it. Yes, I did prove it. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, I I don't know what they are off the top of top my head. Yeah, I mean that's that's probably a file you can't find. But I remember doing a show with you, and I was saying, yeah, so yeah. did this guy really do it? I mean, that would invalidate all your other reversals. And he said, and you said yeah. no, and you played it, and he said something about you know how he faked the story and. That seems to be, I think, the, 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 I think one of the big things is faking stories this this time around. Uh, I don't know if you have anything on Jesse Smollett. Uh, no, I you don't. Know? Okay. So. Yeah, well, I mean, he didn't many, do many press conferences. But the idea of faking stories or telling lies about stories, and I think that will lead us to, in the next hour, talking about Kyle Rittenhouse and what really yeah. happened with him. So we're going to get some reversals on Kyle Rittenhouse as well. Coming up, yep. the year in reverse, 
with David John Oates. Fascinating so far. And we'll be back with more in the next hour right here on Ground Zero. 503-225-0860. That's 503-225-0860. I'm Clyde Lewis. You're listening to Ground Zero, and we'll be back. Music app? Yeah, check it out. Surfer Music Discovery. It links to thousands of online stations, but the twist is you see the song names and artists that are now playing live. That's different. No guessing. Looks like a waterfall of music. So many formats. Rock, oldies, country, R&B, jazz, and a whole lot more. How's that spelled? Surfer. S-U-R-F-R. Is it expensive? It's free. No need to sign up or sign in. Get the Surfer Music app free from Google Play or the App Store. So, you love talk radio, then you'll love TalkStreamLive.com. TalkStream Live is always on, 24-7, with the best streaming talk shows. Find your favorite talkers and discover some new ones. It's free, readily available online, or on mobile with any smartphone or tablet. Finding your favorite talk shows all in one place has gotten a whole lot easier. Just go to TalkStreamLive.com. Be sure to download the free apps from Google Play or the iTunes App Store. Join me on a journey when getting lost is the only true destination for the past, present, and future. All coexist on the same timeline. Our happiness is an illusion. This is the future we are in right now. What are our phones are the first things that we touch when we wake up. The last thing we touch before falling asleep. Radiant. Seductive screens we so love endlessly gaze upon. Much like you're doing right now. Well, welcome to a future where our true reflection is only revealed once the screen goes. Mark, welcome to the darkness. I hope you find it enlightening. The loudspeaker spoke up and said, The loudspeaker spoke up and said, The loudspeaker spoke up and said, Give up. Lewis, and this is Ground Zero. This is the last Ground Zero of 2021. The new year is coming, and we're very excited for our run around the planet, another run around the planet, and I hope you have a great January 1st. But tonight, it's the year in reverse, as we do every year with spectacular guest David John Oates from Australia, who is the founder of Reverse Speech and uh, how Reverse Speech can actually reveal some of the 
murmurings of the unconscious mind. And it's interesting because I was, uh, I've been saying, uh, especially uh, the last show that I did, I talked about the biggest casualty of 2021 uh, was the media, actually. And the fact that the media has turned into a state-sponsored media where uh, there's this effort to perfect what is called social engineering and crowd things, psychological warfare, especially in the in the Western world. And a lot of people have remarked that a significant portion of the population appears to be under a spell. They may be closer to the truth than you think. And you're listening to what Fauci has said, what Biden has said. You're listening to a lot of reversals that uh, reveal the true nature of criminals and how they act. Uh, but we've got this nudge idea, the idea that crowds are nudged with neuro-linguistic programming, effectively changing your behavior without conscious knowledge. Neuro-linguistic programming includes the idea of reframing the people's perception of reality by changing the context in which various situations or realities are viewed by individuals. And there are a lot of therapeutic techniques associated with neuro-linguistic programming. In fact, when you look at reverse speech, it's also used for therapeutics as well, because what it does is it digs deep into the unconscious mind and reframes an individual's perception of what is really going on inside of them. And, and basically, with the linguistic model, we, we are convinced that we see things and we make choices based on the algorithms within the unconscious mind. But here's the thing. When the media sets the talking points, when the media lies to you and they tell you stories that aren't true, people believe them and they'll repeat them, even after the lies are being told and they said, the media says, we were lying, we're sorry, and yet people still believe the lies that they're told. David John Oates here on Ground Zero, the, the founder of Reverse Speech. And one of the examples of this, I think, and uh, honestly, of all the year, it was the Kyle Rittenhouse case. And again, this could be listed as true crime or not true crime. It could be listed as uh, the media intentionally trying to mislead the public into thinking that this young man was a terrorist, when in reality, he was just a kid with a gun who was sent to protect a car lot. And, uh, of course, uh, the neurolinguistic programming was telling people that he murdered three black men, that uh, he was a murderer, that he took guns across state lines. Uh, all this stuff was finally revealed in the courtroom as to be untrue. The media did retract it, but many people still believe the stories. What is the? Uh, what are some of the reversals on this case, if you can find any? Oh, yes, okay. Uh, well, here is, uh, okay, here is one of them. Um, he's telling his uh, story. This is him on uh, uh, Tucker Carlson on Fox News, okay? okay? So here he is. Where were the police? I don't, I don't, I'm not sure really because they have a hard job um, for sure. And he says backwards, the killer rushed on me. 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 Which, of course, is what he claims. Yeah. So he's telling a true story. Right, he, exactly. That, I mean, that's, that's, that's totally consistent with his testimony. And then he says this. What, do you think he was going to shoot you? I did. He had it pointed directly at my head, and that's when I shoot him one time. And, and he says, murder shall not stand. Oh, murder shall not stand. In other words, I'm not going to let this guy murder, murder me. The killer rushed at me, and he's going to shoot me. You know, murder shall not stand. I shot him back. Okay, so... Uh, uh, I swear, there, there are words that cannot explain any of this, in my opinion. You just can't. I mean, this is just so amazing, what, what I'm hearing here. It really is, especially when you... Put the story, uh, uh, you, you put the story against the media and what the court said. The court of public opinion was wrong. Most of the court of public opinion was wrong on Kyle Rittenhouse. The court proved that, and now his reversals are proving that as well. Yeah. And look, here's an ominous warning. Listen to this one. We say the night dogs, I say the night dogs 24th. We wake up in the morning and we're talking, we're like, let's go, let's go help our community. Let's go see what we can do. And we ended up at Ruther Central High School where we were cleaning graffiti. He says, "Freedom worry sucks on it." Why nigga always sucks so hard? Why nigga always sucks so hard? Why nigga always sucks so hard? In other words, look, it's the freedom, you know, my freedom has been violated here. You know, we should all be worried. Okay, yeah. we have our freedom at stake. It's definitely. Does, so. does that make sense? It does. Uh, it does make sense. <laughs> um, the uh, the moving on from Kyle Witt Rittenhouse recently, we sure. had. Uh, oh, you have more? 
I just want to know. Do you have no, one? Oh, okay. well, yes, yes, I do. Well, have I, okay, one. let's let's just uh, let's just finish out the break before the break. Some more Kyle Rittenhouse. Uh, because the Kyle Rittenhouse story is one of those stories that I'm just fascinated on how the media got it all wrong, and yet people still want to believe the media's version of the story. And the court basically got it right. Everybody got it right, and now his reversals are showing that this is what was in his heart. This is what he believes to be true. Yeah. And and so his unconscious mind even backs up what he said forward. So. Yeah, look, if he was lying, then the reversals would say so. It would either say I'm lying or it would give the real version of what happened, you know. Instead of the killer rushed on me, he'd say, you know, I shot him point blank. Exactly. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So, uh, yeah, so, uh, yeah, you, you you get the truth. And here, let's just play one more. This is a, This is just speaks for itself. This is not the life that you planned, no. obviously. It is far from the life I planned. This is... Simply says, you won. You won. You won. You won. And it's almost laughing. He feels relief. vindicated. Yeah. It's a, it's a yeah. laugh of relief. Yeah. It sounds like a laugh of relief. You won. Thank yes. God, you know. Yes, yes yeah. it is. It's a laugh of relief. Yeah, yeah amazing yeah. stuff. So, okay. So, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to uh, take a break, and then we're going to come back. I want to talk a little bit about Jelaine Maxwell. She just got convicted on five counts of human trafficking. Um, and of course, you could face like sixty some odd years in prison. But we have reversals on one of the people, or one of the uh, personalities she mentioned in the courtroom, and that, of course, is Prince Andrew. So we're going to talk about Prince Andrew, and and of course, he's the one, the one that has the most interest because he's been damned with the charges of uh, having sex with a fourteen year old girl. We're going to talk about that coming up with uh, David John Oates. It was an interview he did, and it was very telling reverse wise what he has done and what's in his heart 503-225-0860 that's 503-225-0860 we'll be back David John Oates with us on Ground Zero tonight. Reverse speech: the year in reverse. Uh, the other day, Jelaine Maxwell, uh, she was sentenced—actually, not sentenced, but she was uh, convicted on five counts of child trafficking and uh, sex with minors, uh, setting up uh, meetings and massages with uh, Jeffrey Epstein, and uh, she gave a few names in the court as to who. Uh, was on the the Lolita Express. She named the Clintons. She named Donald Trump, and she named Prince Andrew uh, of many. And uh, certainly, uh, Prince Andrew, though, has been the most notorious of them all. The others, of course, uh, they're they're still under investigation. Uh, but Prince Andrew has been the most notorious. And he did an interview. I can't remember. Was it on sixty Minutes where they were interviewing him? And he said a lot of things about the investigation into his uh, and the allegations that he is a predator, sexual predator for young people. And uh, yeah, it was. The uh, BBC in 2019. Okay, the BBC in 2019 did an interview with Prince Andrew about whether or not he's a sexual predator, and it was really a creepy interview because, I mean, creepy forwards because of how he treated it with no remorse. It was almost like he was a psychopath, or he is anyway, a sociopath. And so I'd like to know what his reversals were like uh, since uh, forwards were just as creepy as anything else. Okay, well, I'll play you a few of them. Some of them I can't play because they've got language and we don't have time. But if you want the full file, just go to my YouTube channel. So here he is. Uh, we'll just say his reversal number one. But during these times that he was a guest at Windsor Castle at Sandringham, uh, the shooting weekend, yep, yeah. we now know that he was and had been procuring young girls for sex trafficking. We now know that. At the time, there was no indication to me or anybody else that that was what he was doing. Okay, so at the time, there was no indication to me that's what he was doing. But backwards, he says, then I knew. Then I knew. Then I knew. 
bring on you. So that's a straight out lie. Okay. Yeah. So, and now he's talking about the photograph. In the photo. I've seen the photograph. How do you explain that? I can't. He says backwards. I cover this up. I cover this up. I cover this up. Okay, I'm sure you'd agree. Pretty clear reversal. Right. Then still talking about the photograph, he says this. Nobody can prove uh, whether or not um, that that photograph has been doctored, but I don't recollect that photograph ever being taken. This is probably one of the most important reversals of the year. Jeff had to get murdered. Jeff had to get murdered. Jeff had to get murdered. See, you know what's interesting about that reversal is that while everybody in the United States, uh, people who want to look at the Democrats as political enemies and want to pin it on the Clintons, I've always felt that the royal family had something to do with the death of Jeffrey Epstein. And it's because oh, of yeah. Prince Andrew. I, I felt that Prince Andrew probably called in a favor from some of his friends, you know, in, in uh, the Secret Service, and they went in and killed him. I've got a name, actually. I can't play it on the air, though, because it's got language in the reversal. Oh, so you got a name of who it is? Yeah, yes, oh. I do. Wow. Yes. Well, I wish. I wish <laughs> it, uh, the, what swear no, words well, in it? Well, you can't say it on the air, can you? You can't say the swear word. No, no, no. Well, the reversal says. Um, well, we could dump uh, it, but you dump the whole thing. We're talking about whether or not we yeah. can get away with the name or not. Are you no, afraid to give yeah, the name? Just say the name. Say the name. I'll, I'll just tell you what it says. Brist, Bristol paid the blank, blank, blank. And uh, the blank, blank, blank is a killer. Is it uh, a hit man? I the the son of a man. what? Did you say son of a what? Did you say son of a what? Or it was worse <laughs> than that. I'm, not, I'm just trying to see if we can get away with it at night. We, I guess not. Oh, I'm okay. just so interested in I, hearing. No, I it. think you can look. I look. You know what? Okay, he'll, he'll, Okay, I'll tell you what. Here's the deal. Here's the deal. You play it, and Wes, you decide if we're going with it. If not, we dump it. Got it? Okay. okay. So play well, the reversal. The it's up to Wes. Says. Okay. Okay. So here we go. What was your response on hearing that he'd died? Shock. Some people think that he didn't take his own life. Well, there again, I'm not one to be able to answer that question. And look, you've got to watch this on the YouTube video. He laughs. He's got this wicked, devious laugh. Uh -huh. And he says backwards, a Bristol paid the, in the last word. Was the paid this not? Was the paid this not? Was the paid this not? You hear that last word? Yeah, we did. I, we're gonna let it go. Yeah, we're gonna. We're not gonna say what it is. But we're gonna let it go. Let people You're figure it out go. on their own. Okay. But we hear the name. So his name was Bristol. Bristol. Bristol, or it could be a town. It could have been a. Could have been the town, town of Bristol. In the town of Bristol. Okay. I mean, you need to have an. Or the money from came from Bristol. Brist Bristol paid the. You know. That's right. Yeah. Because Bristol, right. Bristol is considered a a, a banking area of, of Britain. Correct. Exactly. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Uh, it could be. It could be a bank account in Bristol under another name. I mean, you'd have to have some investigative report. This is insane. This, this is like a, a edgy receipt mystery right here. This is Bristol paid the, mm, and Bristol is where the banking is. The banking district. It's. It's. Yeah. Right. yeah. Oh yeah. my God. Yeah, you, yeah I know. This is amazing. Yeah, I'll, just play, I'll just play one more verse. On okay. Andrew. All right. All right. Let's, all right. That we never had any sort of sexual contact, whatever. She spoke about you outside the court in August of this year. Mm -hmm. She said, I quote, he knows exactly what he's done, and I hope he comes clean about it. And the answer what? is nothing. And back was your fun, s serious lie. A fun, serious oh. lie. A fun, serious oh. lie. A fun, serious oh. lie. Oh. Serious lie. He's lying through his teeth. My God. Uh, it, it's my... It's, I think <sighs> you're quite right when you said the death of Epstein came from the royals. I believe that. I believe that reversal. Jeff had to get murdered. There's a confession for the hit. Personally. Yeah. There you go. I've said it on the air. I'm, I'm, I'm completely stunned. I, I just... I, it, once again, it, it never ceases to amaze how... Um, how reverse speech does this how it can like you know bring this forward uh and of course like i said you you've got motive you've got who murdered uh jeffrey yeah, epstein yeah. you've got yeah. prince andrew con basically confessing that he is a predator 
Um, yep. and, and, of course, I'm sure him and Jimmy Savile had a lot to talk about oh. when he was alive. I, I just, you know, and, and this is the stuff, believe it or not, this is the stuff that my former producer, Tracy Twyman, was investigating before she died, before she was found hanged in her in a garage. And uh, and and this is the this is the stuff that um, you know certainly when you get into the ugliness of who's involved here, we're looking at heads of state, we're looking at monarchs, we're looking at presidents, we're looking at uh, even even uh, high ranking officials in the Catholic Church. Um, oh, absolutely! I mean, you oh, were, yeah. you had a lot of the uh, reverses on that cardinal from Australia, didn't you? Oh yes, I did. He was he was a bad man. Oh, yes. Yeah. No, I haven't. I haven't. Uploaded that one to YouTube yet? I'll have to. Be, I'll yeah, you're gonna have to done. do that because that certainly. I mean, I remember you played some of those for us yeah. uh, yeah. in a different outing, and it, it just it just was creepy to hear the, the, what's deep inside these people. And uh, so we're gonna take a break. And coming up, I want to talk with you about while we're on the subject of royalty, that were uh, at least two big stories dealing with royalty, both the Queen's health and uh, Meghan and Harry when they had their interview with Oprah Winfrey right. and uh, a big I scandal. Think, that that created for uh, the year 2021. I know some of this stuff, a lot of people say, well, I, they don't care about this, but there are some uh, re revealings in these things that you really need to hear because of some of the discussions we had on Ground Zero during the year 2021. Tonight, it's the year in reverse, and this is probably one of the most hardest-hitting years in reverse we've had with some of the most clearest and thought-provoking reversals that I've ever heard. And, and this is certainly, it just gets better and better with age, Five zero three two two five zero eight sixty. That's five zero three two two five zero eight sixty. David John Oates tonight. Hey, coming up, we're talking about how you can get the reversal app for your phone so you can do some reversals on your own. That's coming up on Ground Zero with David John Oates. Stay tuned. We got a whole lot more to get to. Don't go away. You would never get across the street. The world is trillions of times more complicated. You don't actually see what gets edited out. We have to cut it down to a manageable entity. Entity. A filter bone. In fact, when we listen to the song, and we're still not going to listen to it backwards yet, but when we listen to the song forward, I want you to catch something. Just a, a little part of it. Very interesting. Clyde Lewis, you are listening to Ground Zero. Tonight, 
one of the more outstanding shows about the year in reverse with David John Oates. And we're glad to have him on the program. Some of the most groundbreaking, if not earth-shattering, reversals are being heard tonight about the news, what we heard in 2021, some of the news stories of 2021. Now, a lot of people have been asking about the app you have that you can use to do your own reversals. What is the name of the app and where can they get it? Right, it's called I Reverse Speech. Okay, uh, it's available for uh, both Apple and Android. You can get it from the App Store. Uh, make sure you get the I Reverse Speech one. There's other apps out there, but ours is the best. Of course, I have to say that because it's mine. <laughs> but you, there's there's actually about a half a dozen apps out there that'll do it. But uh, ours is called I Reverse Speech, and it's free. Very good. That's awesome. A lot of people, I'm sure, would want to get that app so they can do their own reversals. Okay, so we're talking about Prince Andrew. We're talking about uh, the royals, of course, had a lot of focus with uh, the the death of Prince Philip, the the appearance of Prince Charles uh, uh, involved with uh, the Davos crowd at the World Economic Forum, speaking like he would be if he was the Antichrist. Uh, Scary stuff coming from the royal family. But the the story that had everybody, uh, I think, uh, wondering about the the royal family was the 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 Prince Harry Meghan interview with Oprah Winfrey, the the Duchess of Sussex, and uh, how Prince Harry and Meghan uh, apparently lifted the lid on what it's like to be in the British royal family. And uh, you know, Meghan, of course, sounded a lot like Princess Diana, saying that it was difficult for her to live, that she had suicidal thoughts, said there were concerns about uh, their baby Archie because he was a darker color. Uh, the, the whole idea of race and and uh, all this was uh, all it, it was all opportunistic. It seemed it was like a, an interview that you know when it happened, people were so divided on, it, and a lot of people said, "Well, who cares? They're the royals." But truth is, they're here in America, and you know they have aspirations. Let's just say this: they have aspirations to do more than just be you know commentators on Oprah Winfrey. They certainly have plans, and I've heard you know rumors about Harry wanting to get into politics or maybe even. Megan getting yep. into politics. I don't know if that can be done, but still, you know, this, these are things that uh, certainly have a lot of people alarmed in the United States. So I was just curious if you have any reversals on the Prince yes. Harry Megan uh, interview. Yeah, well, let's start off with probably uh, probably one of the most significant ones to start off with. This is uh, Megan talking. And here we look at some of her motives behind doing the interview. Okay. Typically, we're stepping back from senior roles to be just like. Several, I mean, I can think of so many right now who are all their royal highnesses, prince or princess, duke or duchess, who earn a living, live on palace grounds, can support the queen if and when called upon. She says back was wish to shatter queen. And she's just not after the queen. Listen to this one. It was reported that Meghan had left Kate in tears over the bride-to-be's strict demands over flower girl dresses. The narrative with with Kate, which didn't happen, was really, really difficult and something that I think that's when everything changed, really. And then she says, smash everyone. That was actually not so clear. Sorry about that. I thought that was clear. Well, that. It's still there. I can hear it. Yeah. It's yeah. Yeah. So, but wish to shatter queen, smash everyone. Yeah, she's just, she's just throwing her weight around. And but even the night, here she is again. night before, days before, with the statement coming out, I remember that conversation. So, and how do you know she wasn't blindsided? And here she says, "I, I remember lying." I remember lying. I remember lying. I remember lying. So, uh, basically, you can't believe a word that comes out of her mouth. It, is basically well, well see that was the that was the idea got a lot of people fired a lot of people uh you know pierce morgan of course got fired because he expressed that he got the feeling that this was all uh there to discredit the royal family that they wanted to uh, create a race situation that didn't exist or they wanted that he yep. didn't believe yep. megan's story and that they got him fired because they were saying something and even i think uh sharon osborne uh yep. spoke up about it and she got fired too from uh, her job and uh, yep. basically accusing both of them of being racist because they didn't sympathize with Megan's situation, and that, and and so listening to Megan's reversals, we're realizing again that we have people who really want to create a schism 
uh, based on yep. race, and uh, and it's just it's just terrible. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, well, they were fired because they spoke up. You know, the, their into, their instincts were quite accurate because Megan was just lying through the whole lot. You know, um, I mean, gee, where can they? Oh, listen to this one. Oh boy, watch, watch, watch out for young Archie when he grows up, or oh, their daughter a little, little bit. Listen to this one. And also, concerns and conversations about how dark his skin might be when he's born. Makes a god my husband. Makes a god my husband. Yeah. Makes a god my husband. Makes a god my husband. Which basically says to me again, we're dealing with a family of antichrists. I, I, I have said many That's times right. that the royal family, that the royal family is going to produce the antichrist. That it's either going to be Charles, it's going to be uh, William. I don't think much about Harry, but the truth of the matter is, is when you look at the Arthurian. Uh, I guess you call dogma within the uh, Church of England right now, and the idea of the once and future king who is going to rule the kingdom and bring about the new Roman Empire in Britain, or the idea that you know uh, Jesus would return to Britain because it's the new Jerusalem. I mean, this is the it's called Anglo-Israelism, and this is what the royals believe. They believe that the direct descendants of Jesus, that they can trace blood all the way to Joseph of Arimathea to King David. And uh, they are royal blood. When in reality, they're lying because we know they're not. We know that they're more related to the Huns than related to anybody else. But they want to tell their people that they have that pedigree. And so with that, you hear someone like Prince Charles speaking at Davos. And he sounds like he wants to command armies to enforce these green deals. want to enforce the, the climate change situation and, and then reset. And it's just creepy the way... They seem to look at themselves as godlike, uh, and uh, of course, uh, this uh, confirms a lot of, of uh, what I've speculated about. Of course, David John Oates, uh, reverse speech, the year in reverse. Coming up, you're going to hear a reverse from the Queen that may confirm something that was said to us by Dr. Heldor during a seance at Halloween. Something about the Queen, of course. 503 225 503 225 More from David John Oates. Don't go away. It's the year in reverse with David John Oates. So, okay, we just heard Prince Andrew. We heard uh, the Duchess of Sussex and Prince Harry. We heard Meghan. Um, now, uh, back in October, if you remember, we did a show called uh, Calling Dr. Heldor. And Dr. Heldor has been a character that has shown up during our seances we have sometimes on the air with a Ouija board. And Dr. Heldor always gives information about, you know, health and the future and and things we need to be aware of. And one of the things that was talked about uh, during the end of uh, the session we had on the air was he said, watch your P's and Q's. And we determined that that meant watch your presidents, popes, and queens. And because he mentioned that the pope was sick, that he was going to die. Uh, he mentioned that President Biden was sick, that he was going to die. And that the queen was sick and that she was going to die. And uh, that he mentioned the lungs. He mentioned there was sickness in the lungs. Uh, President Biden has been coughing a lot lately. He also got a colonoscopy that said that he had a, a tumor that may need to be watched because it could lead to cancer. Uh, we also have the problem with the Pope. He has one lung and he has also been reportedly sick. In fact, they did a story that was released in the Vatican saying that he died a few days ago. It didn't happen. It was a, it was a fake story. But uh, he also said that he believes that he's not going to make it into, uh, uh, there was a story that was released that said he's not going to make it past, uh, you know, the, 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 to the spring of uh, 2022. And, of course, uh, the Queen has been in the hospital a lot, and a lot of people worry about her health and whether or not Prince Charles is going to be a bridge king to the prince, uh, Prince William. And I was just curious if you had any reversals that would indicate that either the president, the queen, or the pope are sick and dying. Right. I've got nothing on the president or the pope, but I do have one on the queen. Okay. So, right, uh, right. 
So here we go. So this is a queen from her Christmas speech, which she gave just, just well, Christmas Day. So here we go. And as much as I and my family miss him, I know he would want us to enjoy Christmas. We felt his presence as we, like millions around the world, readied ourselves for Christmas. And she says, I'm sick. God knows it. The fact she used the word God knows it sort of suggests to me it's a bit of a, a terminal Ill, illness, if right. you know what I mean. Right, you know and, and see that that that's uh, that would uh, that would basically be congruent with what Doctor Hildor was saying on our show that uh, we need to watch our popes, our our queens, and our presidents because they are getting older and that they're becoming frail and they're dying. And, that, and there was a worry at, at one time after the colonoscopy that President Biden had some problem. Now they're saying that he has bad motor skills. His his motor responses are are are, uh, are hard to you know. He has to take medication to keep his stiff gait from happening because he has a stiff gait and we were right. talking with uh, david knight and he said yeah it's a big secret it's not so big of a secret that president biden is deteriorating uh no yeah. word on whether or not he's near death but he's still deteriorating and it's obvious that he is yeah look i haven't seen anything in reverse but i'll start looking for it you know see if i yeah. can find anything as far as the pope of course you know the I, I just don't have much on the Pope speaking in English, and that's what I need. The only thing I've got on the Pope goes back to his address to Congress a few years back. But uh, uh, I, I looked at the Mass. it was None of it was in English, so uh, so it was a bit useless to me, unfortunately. Right. But yeah, l let me just play one more reversal on the Queen, Okay. I think is significant. All right. She's talking about the Christmas message. They teach us all a lesson just as the Christmas story does, that in the birth of a child, there is a new dawn with endless potential. It is this simplicity of the Christmas story that makes it so universally appealing. Simple happenings that form the starting point of the life of Jesus, a man whose teachings have been handed down from generation to generation. And she says, yes, they scammed it. Yes, this Yes, this Yes, this Yes, and the message of Jesus has been scammed. Is how I interpret that. Yeah, so. even from the royal family themselves, that's something. Oh yeah, certainly, certainly, definitely. So, in, you, uh, I was going to ask yeah. you as well. Uh, you know, dealing with all the leadership that you reverse, uh, from Fauci or President Biden or somebody. Is there anyone that is giving away the plot for 2022? Is there anything in the future that you see is going to happen in 2022 with regards to reversals? Hmm. Oh, what an interesting question. I haven't been asked that. Uh, yes, I would have to say that things are going to get worse, not better. Um, I think uh, well, I, I'm seeing nothing positive in reverse at all, looking to the future. I'm sorry to say that. I don't like to be a doomsayer, but um, right. uh, I uh, things are going to get worse. The virus is going to get worse. Right. Uh, government control is going to get worse. Uh, they're moving in to implement a whole new financial system with the mark being involved. Um, um, just sit back and watch prophecy un unveil before your very eyes. That's exactly yeah, what it that's is, all, certainly. That's all I can say. Let's go. Uh, we're going to do some calls now. Let's go to Robert in South Carolina. Hi, Robert. You're on with David John Oates. Oh, thank you. I wanted to know uh, if uh, the American language or the English language is a precursor of the Tower of Babel, if there's any connection between our language opposed to any other. Are you saying that, are you asking if, the English language and that's why was the first these language. Reversals are significant. Yeah, would and you say that, David? Would you say that English was probably the first language, or, or do you think it's something oh. else? I had no idea. <laughs> no. no, I have no knowledge uh, on that question at all. What Sorry. Up, well, I, I do know Robert right, that but, you know I, the time that I've known uh, I, I've known David that when we've done reversals before, there have been times. That I have heard reversals in Spanish, especially with uh, Spanish-speaking oh, individuals. Oh, that's what he's asking. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, well, I'm, no, he, he was just asking. Okay. He was just asking if he feels that like English is the original language before the Tower of Babel, because the, of course, you do oh, a I lot see. of uh, English-speaking reversals. But I think a lot of people don't realize that that it just seems to me that in reverse speech, it's the language you think in, or the language of the yeah. time you're thinking yeah. in, because you think 
when you do when you speak a different language, you think in that language in order to speak it. I don't think people I think people who know who speak different languages know that you need to register in your brain the the object and and the word at the same time rather than going, well that's the English word, here's the Spanish word. No, you already know how to say the words in Spanish, you know. La pared is de frente de mí. You know, you know you know the walls in front of you. Uh or, you know, la puerta es, está cerrado, you know, the door's closed. Uh, these, these are things that, you know, you, you know, it just comes second nature to you when you're speaking a different language. And I remember there was a time where we did a reversal on this, uh, Latino guy that was at a, uh, it was a, a, a home preparedness show that we were at. And, uh, he spoke and he said something about, he said, mi corazón está enferma. And, uh, we went to him and I said, I heard in Spanish that your heart is sick. And he says, it's interesting. He says, my gosh, he says, it's been like three or four weeks. He says, I had open heart surgery. And, uh, and so we said, well, why don't you go back to your doctor then and see what's going on? So, uh, you know, yep. I mean, there, I mean, and I've also heard German words and, and somebody else said they heard a Russian, uh, they heard Russian words before and when, you know, you do Vladimir Putin or others. So yeah, David, I'll tell you right now, this is probably one of the most groundbreaking years in reverse we've done why because uh in fact we made the comment about uh brian laundry's reversals how in forwards they weren't that clear but in reverse you could hear them loud and clear as if the conscious or the unconscious mind was a lot more forceful than the forwards mind quickly tell us where we can find information on reverse speech seminars and other things while we still have a few minutes or a minute uh yeah yeah go to my website reverse speech.com reverse speech.com if you want to keep up with my progress, look for me on Facebook. I'm very active on my Facebook page. Just search for David Oates. Okay. And, uh, um, yeah, next training class starts the 18th of January. If you right. want to learn how to do this, email me. Okay. Well, what uh, we're going to do is probably see you in six months. You know, every six months we try and do this, yep. uh, maybe even yep. earlier. We've, we had you on more times this year than we've ever had. So maybe we'll be on again with all this stuff happening. But thank you again. Every year, it's a pleasure Thanks, to have bye. you on for the year in reverse. Thank you so much. All right. See you, right. See you later. Man. You bet. Bye. Bye-bye. And stay tuned on Aftermath.fm. It is on Beyond Zero. We'll be on with you, and we'll have some fun. So stay tuned.